And no one so objects. <laughs> we didn't do anything. That's, that's the report. That's right. the substantive so portion of it. So the we went fell down the job as fast as possible. We're hoping to pick up again the ball next year. Uh, Wilk on Runner's Guide and Editorial Committee. Um, is there a report for that committee? Uh, seeing none. Uh, oh, sorry. <coughs> All right, stood up heading to the microphone. Okay, yeah, my, my apologies. Mike Wilmoth, Chairman of the World Con Runners Guide Editorial Committee. Uh, we've made incremental progress again for a second year. Um, uh, we've updated some sections, added some data to sections that have missing information. Um, but we've still got a lot of work to go, and um, uh, we're continuing to work on it. It's um, it's under construction and plodding along, and, and we're moving forward. And if anybody wants to be on the committee, please see me after this meeting. Any questions? Yeah, I have a question. Yeah. I'm Glazer. Um, given that the, um, you know, the nature of crime rate changes, there are different things that happen in technology. And so on. Uh, do you ever believe that there is a final state for that, or is it always going to be a continually evolving project? And if so, then what, where are you calling your period? <coughs> Uh, the question was, uh, is this going to continually evolve, and is there an end point right, at some point? Well, I think with the evolution of society, uh, world comes are going to evolve to adapt. And therefore, it's probably going to continue to evolve as long as world comes can uh, continue to exist. So in that respect, I don't think there's going to be any end point but we might reach a point where the 99.9 .9 percentile, where almost everything has been documented, and then we just make updates as needed. Technology improves, et cetera. <coughs> Any other questions? <coughs> OK, anybody who's interested in contributing, please see me. And thank you very much. OK, the next, uh, next committee is the uh, Hugo Eligibility for the Rest of the World, the HERO Committee. Uh, ben, do you have a report? Uh, the report consists of two motions. Uh, one, the first motion is the motion to continue the committee. Uh, and that motion has been passed every year because this committee, unlike several of the others, is not a permanently uh, created committee. Uh, the other more substantive motion is a motion to extend eligibility, which can be passed by this meeting. Uh, a further piece that is not part of the formal report is that there is ongoing discussion within the committee concerning whether a the need for this motion for extended eligibility is <coughs> continues to be important. The consensus of the committee has been that yes, it continues to be important. That's why we reported the motion. The other question is whether a constitutional change that would make this extend, extended eligibility permanent is an appropriate change to the Constitution at this point. The consensus of the committee, to the extent that we have one, is that so far nobody has come up with the idea of a constitutional change that has gained majority support within the committee, but we continue to examine that option. And should the consensus within the committee change, in future years, a civil committee continues to be reappointed. I would expect that the committee would report a constitutional change to support it. Are there any questions? Why is this committee not permanent? Um, you need to do something like amend the standing rules for the Constitution to uh, require that the business meeting appointed or continue. So there, there's a provision in the Constitution because it's a clear out dead with it. Any um, any, except as provided in the standing rules for the Constitution, any, any committee automatically expires at the end of the business meeting that doesn't vote to continue it. Okay. So 
So if you're, I mean, that's not exactly what you asked, but that's the mechanism. Um, How many years has a hero committee existed? Um, basically close to a decade at this point, uh, in, ver in various flavors. Uh, behind you on the left. Uh, uh, right. A workshop shall not be eligible if in a prior year it received sufficient nominations to appear on the final award ballot. Um, what happens if, say, for sake of argument, is a Doctor Who episode nominated for Best Dramatic Short, but because of other nominations, the specific episode came in six or seven. So it's not on the final ballot, but you still received plenty of nominations. Does that mean it is eligible or not eligible? The constitutional wording is very clear, and we have no judgment that we can exercise on that point. The constitutional, the constitutional wording is unambiguous. Which, which is the answer? Yeah, yeah. 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 If it's not enough to appear on the final ballot, it's not. It's not. It's it's not. not. Otherwise, it is. Oh, okay, thank you. Yeah, and these questions are all uh, delegated to me. You. The individual world content on this the Hugo's. Okay, any yeah, other listen to any further questions at this point? So is there any objection to is there any objection to continuing the committee? Then back up. Seeing none, uh, the committee is continued. Um, the um, the motion to uh, uh, extend eligibility uh, requires a three quarters vote. Uh, so I will do a serpentine vote on that. Is there any debate? I'll try show hands. Uh, okay. Actually, ask for objections. Sure. Okay. Any objections to the continued extended eligibility? Seeing none, eligibility is extended. As for the second motion, being yeah, that's consent being more than three quarters. Okay. I, I 
We tend to make a no presentation. Okay, are there questions on this presentation? <laughs> Seems like it wouldn't be anything objectionable if the presentation is empty. Yes? Is the corporate and tax status of Philcon problem resolved? You may address all such questions to Gary Felbaum. I am the treasurer, not the tax corporation. I'm not even a member of the board of the Philadelphia Corporation at this point, just a general member. Is there a Philadelphia Corporation at this point? Yes, we held yes. a meeting last week, and that's why there's the disbursements, which I do not know if they have been received, because I am also not a signatory anymore. Chicago can report its disbursement was received. Thank you. I, I, I generally got my start contact. But it has not been received yet. Okay. Well, I, I'm fairly sure that it was more timely to make sure Chicago had its monies in hand. We weren't worried about be. it. It's probably waiting in Texas. Um, I'd just like to encourage um, uh, Milfin to disperse its surplus as quickly as possible. Um, as a member, I certainly have been doing the same. However, the only ones that were ratified and dispersed as of last August 18th was the two listed on the current balance sheet. Is there a process for applying for grants? Because um, the Worldcon Heritage Organization was just founded and it's in need of money to preserve the Worldcon uh, Heritage uh, History Exhibit. Certainly, um, any disbursements other than to actually done we're postponed until the next meeting, next corporate meeting. So my advisement to you is to submit your application for disbursement to, and I'm only doing this because it's the only email address I can remember is Todd Dashoff <laughs> at gmail.com. The corporation people Unfortunately, it doesn't matter. Period, right. period, period. That is, this, you can go back to Smoths and confirm that email address. The other two people who sh to whom this should be correctly addressed, I am not as competent of the email address, and I will trust that the main person will pass on to those who should be receiving it. Um, Lou, are you secretary or not? I'm a member of large. I'm a board member at large of the uh, Philadelphia Corporation. We are. We have discussed process of dispersing money. Uh, we're eager to disperse it. We're here to disperse it to such things as it, it, it can't be resolved. Can yet. you just state your email address so there's okay. a secretary proof that it was sent to a member of the Philadelphia Corporation? L. Walcoff. W. O L K O F F as in Frank at Prodigy P for Paul R O D for Dave I G Y dot net. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, motion to encourage oh, now on the corporation name. Millville is good enough.
Um, uh, the next item would be the Nippon 2007 financial report. Um, representative from Nippon 2007, yes. Uh, pardon for the, the uh, presentation in Japanese, and uh, that's, that's why the interpreter is present. Uh, first of all, my apologies that the uh, financial report needed, needs an amendment. And uh, there are three major reasons uh, for the amendment being made. Uh, there is uh, one unwritten tradition with the uh, Japanese uh, National Science Fiction Convention is that uh, any deficit becomes the burden of the uh, convention chair. And um, second, I have personal doubts as to if, if, a, uh, if there were a, say, a straightforward uh, presentation of the actual deficit, that uh, there may be uh, future doubts about uh, the suitability of holding Worldcon in Japan. え、私たちのゲストボーナーであった、え、島野拓海さんが、え、ワールドコンを開くことによって赤字が出ることに関して、彼自身が負担をしたいということを申し出る可能性がありました。え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、
えー、これから、えー、私自身、これらの、えー、赤字をもちろん、えー、返していくことで、えー、進めていこうと思いますが、えー、いろいろな方々の助言を、えー、受けて、えー、それを、えー、受け止めていく形を、えー、考えていきたいと思っています。And、uh, I will continue to, to, to pay back the,、uh, the debt owed、uh, by UN 2007,、uh, but、um, uh, I will uh, uh, be uh, very Welcoming to any advice that, that, that friends may be、uh, giving to me, and、uh, I will work hard to be a c c e p t a b l ですから、えー、今回、えー、こういう形でお時間をいただき、えー、皆さんに、えー、こういう報告をすることに関して、えー、深くお詫びを申し上げます。So,、um, I sincerely、uh, apologize for making this kind of amendment to the financial report, and、uh, thank everyone for giving me the opportunity here. And,、um, if there are any、uh, questions,、uh, I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you.
uh, and maybe a little bit less than that because I suspect the noon event people will start showing up before noon on the dot. Next is Ossipan floor. Representative from Ossipan coming up, I see. I'm Mary Mitchell. I'm the uh, treasurer of the legal entity that looks after the Conflict for Victorian Science Fiction Conventions. Um, uh, I've just noticed there's actually an error on this report where the heading says financial report to renovation. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do apologise. I used last year's template, and obviously I didn't correct it. <laughs> Um, so this is just a straight out uh, 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 report and I've included all the years of the convention so it's clear to um, what our actual expenses were. I don't think there's anything tricky on it. Um, our, our surplus was um, uh, around about 65 grand. Uh, we cast along uh, the required pass on funds by June last year. I do apologise, some of those payments were late. Um, and what we're doing now is Victorian Science Fiction Conventions Inc. is winding up and we hope to be um, uh, finished, close out the organisation by, probably by December 30th this year. So we're going to distribute all of our, our money, our surplus. Um, which we've started to do already as um, Market Protection Committee reported. And I've just got one more payment to do. Any questions? I'm sorry, what did you say you hope to be closed by? December 30th, okay. 2012. All right. I don't no? see any questions. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, we have the uh, financial report from renovation. Wells, Chair of Renovation. We have two minor additions to this report since it was sent in, the, and there, there are uh, other grants from the surplus. The first is $5,000 to the new World, Worldcon Heritage Organization. We felt that once LA had done its time looking after the history exhibits, that any new organization that's taking this on and looking after it needs all the encouragement it can get from all of the other world cons. I so seldom get applause when I'm teaching. Um, the second is another grant we're working on. We gave money to the Susan C. Petrie Scholarships, which encourages semi-professional writers to hone up their skills and add to our community. I'm working with the artist's master class, which was the closest equivalent we could find for artists for doing the same thing, to take the people who are good and hone them up to become the best and brightest in the future. And with whatever's left, I heartily endorse what Vince is saying about working with the Japanese. Any questions? Um, that second amount was also $5,000 to the Susan um, That second amount is to be determined on, based on number of scholarships, and that's, it will probably be closer to 15, but that's still in process. And then we will work to close out our books as soon as possible. Shotgun 7 for Hugo Pins? Yes. Paid for the entire nominee pin or for Shotgun 7? <laughs> Chikakon! Um, Chika. It's pronounced Chikon. <laughs> Thanks for the clarification. Okay. But, but Patrick Nielsen Hayden uh, thanked me for paying for the pens, so I don't care who we gave it to. <laughs>
Next item is the reconstruction of NASPIC report. All right, I, I did want to point out uh, one minor error in here. Well, two actually. Uh, the, the first is that the market protection committee, we, that looks like a, that was an erroneous comma. We, we gave them $276, not $27,600. Oh, yes. <laughs> gravy. You're going to have to give them a comma. <laughs> <laughs> That was supposed to pay for my new furnace. <laughs> uh, the other is that I, I believe our uh, $1,000 donation from anticipation got pulled in the memberships by accident. So, uh, again, can you? Uh, in general, though, we have finished making what reimbursements we can to the staff and program participants and. Uh, will be a closing up shop. Some of those have not been paid for yet. So, <coughs> excuse me. So that pass-through item should be offset by a under under expenses. You'll also see another uh, shirt pass-through item, which is uh, a little bit less, which simply indicates that some of our members haven't paid for their shirts yet. Yeah. Follow. Well, um, a question on the membership figures. So. Recent U.S. World Cons, including Chicago and Reno, have generally hit the 2,000-2,400 members at right. the end of the prior year, which right. for you is three months away. This seems uh, a low number of members. That's, that's how we that's, feel also. This, this, how concerned are you about that in terms of saying, you know, the solidity of your budget? We're very concerned about it right now. We're, uh, we're looking at the numbers as they stand right now, concerned with what we expected at this point in time. And, we're already starting looking at areas where we can cut our budget back. Based on what we're seeing right now, we're, we're not going to be able to spend the amount of money that we had hoped to spend. 
uh, we're, we're, we're already addressing that issue. Are there any other questions? Seeing none, uh, thank you very much for the report. Thank you. I believe that concludes the preliminary business meeting agenda. Okay, anybody else? I just want to remind people to sign in. Uh, there's a sign-in sheet there. There's ribbons to indicate you've participated up front. Yes? I was distressed by the lack of the traditional no small thing logo on the door. Do you think we could have that remedy for the next meeting as it's an important piece of Spanish tradition? I didn't well, bring them with me. We'll look into it, but we're going to get attached things to the walls or anything. Yeah. Yes? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I forgot to ask to renew the uh, committee for the World Cup Runners tonight officially. That one's that one is in the standing room. Oh, yeah, it is. Okay. So, okay. Um, so see, you know, other, yeah. yeah, you want to reiterate reiterate the start times for the people who came I will. So, as well, so the start times for all three sessions of the business meeting will be 10.30, and uh, this uh, preliminary session is uh, goodbye adjourned. The next session will be the main business meeting at 10.30 a.m. tomorrow in this room. Yay.